Walter Elias Disney. He was the co-founder of the media empire and the imaginative super force behind the creation of Mickey Mouse and Disneyland. He's so legendary that his truths are hard to discern from fiction. I'm Alex the Historian, and for the last 15 years I've been studying the history of the Disney Company in an effort to better my understanding. With the Disney fanbase growing exponentially in recent years, and so many rumors still swirling about this honored man, I've created this video series in order to delve deeper, to tackle the ever-elusive question of just exactly who was Walt Disney. Walt Disney is accused of many things. Some of them are true, but not always for the reasons people think they are. It's easy to pick and choose which elements of the truth you want to use to frame a story the way you want, but history has a way of putting things in perspective. That's what I like about it. Properly documented history will tell the whole story, instead of just the single point of view that most people choose. Today I'm going to tell you one you've probably already heard. That's the story of how Walt Disney allegedly ruined the career of Adriana Casalotti, the original voice of Snow White. But this time, I'm going to lend a bit of historical perspective. The movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was going to be the world's first full-length animated feature film. At the time, it was known as Walt Disney's Folly because no one believed audiences would actually sit through a feature-length cartoon. Back then, cartoons were seen as only good for gags and short stories. No one could possibly imagine that you could draw up a character that made you empathize with them. So this is what made the movie a huge risk. Walt Disney knew that if the movie failed, his company might go under, so he took great measures to ensure that the film be kept a strict secret during the first half of its production. The casting director for the film had searched far and wide for an actress whose voice not only embodied the innocent girl they were creating for the film, but they also needed a voice that was operatic. After having no luck finding such a voice, Walt pointed the casting director to Guido Casalotti, a Hollywood voice teacher and musician. When the casting director called Guido, his daughter, 18-year-old Adriana, was eavesdropping on the other line. When she realized Disney was looking for a voice for a cartoon feature, she chimed in and said, Me, 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 how about me? Listen to me. Then she hummed a short tune in falsetto and said, Wouldn't my voice do? Indeed, she was selected to audition for the role, eventually being chosen to voice Snow White. Now, it's important to note that even Adriana was kept in the dark about the Snow White feature being a full-length film. She simply thought Snow White might be featured on an episode of Silly Symphonies or another experimental cartoon short. This is because Walt feared that if the media caught wind of the project, their opposition to it might impede the success of the movie. Adriana came to several recording sessions, being paid $20 a day over the length of nearly three years. Her pay totaled about $970. But let's also remember that this was an experimental movie, which could very likely tank at the box office, throw the company in debt, and ruin the careers of everyone who worked on it. Plus, the movie was so expensive, Walt Disney himself had to mortgage his house to help pay for it. And lastly, 18-year-old Adriana had never been in a film up until that point. There was no telling when she'd sign her contract if she would end up giving a star performance. All of it was a gamble. So Adriana was more than happy to accept the contract at the time. Adriana didn't originally have her sights set on movie stardom. Her mother and sister were opera singers, and her father taught music and voice acting. So naturally, she too wanted to sing opera on stage. But when she came to record her voice for Disney, she also found that they needed her to wear a costume and act out various scenes so the animators had visual reference. Essentially, she was acting in front of a camera and discovered that movie acting could be fun as well. It's true that Adriana was not credited in the movie. After all, Walt wanted people to forget the real-world effort it took to create his animated films, which is why her name, nor that of the other voice actors in the movie, was listed in the credits. Let's also not forget that at this time in history, it was not common to have a lot of credits in a movie, because the general consensus was that audiences would not sit through a lot of credits if they were too long especially not for an animated movie. There's a story Adriana told about the premiere of the movie, where she and Harry Stockwell, the actor who voiced the prince, had not been invited to the premiere, and when they tried to get in, the usher wouldn't let them in without tickets, which led them to sneaking into the theater. The reason they were not invited was because Walt wanted to preserve the illusion of the characters. 
In fact, when Adriana signed her contract, it included a clause that dictated she could only act in uncredited movie roles from then on. Again, to preserve the illusion of Snow White. But before you get mad at Walt, remember that when she signed the contract at age 18, she didn't see herself becoming a movie actress. She was very much interested in stage opera. But once she became Snow White, she realized she was interested in film. And just because she wasn't allowed to be credited doesn't mean that stopped her. She went on to play roles in movies such as Naughty Marietta, Disney's Modern Inventions, The Bride Wore Red, The Wizard of Oz, We Were Dancing, Two Sisters from Boston, It's a Wonderful Life, and One Hour in Wonderland. What I'm trying to say here is that Walt Disney did not maliciously blacklist her from Hollywood, but when it turned out she did want to act, her uncredited roles made it hard for her to find work as a major character. Maybe it was because of this that Walt continued to hire her back decade after decade for special appearances and Snow White voiceovers for Disneyland. This shows that Walt Disney was no longer afraid to show the public who she was. After all, why would he keep putting her on camera if he still cared about preserving the illusion of Snow White? Adriana never held anything against Walt Disney. How could she? She knew what she signed. She wasn't happy about it, but she didn't blame Walt Disney. In fact, she always continued to speak fondly of him. She took pride whenever he hired her for special appearances, and she was always happy to sing the songs, no matter how many times she was asked to do it. It's easy to frame this story as Walt Disney being too greedy to give her more money after the movie became successful, but let's put this in perspective. Walt and Roy Disney were not the only two people operating Walt Disney Productions. It was a public company run by a board of directors and managed by executives. Their profits went towards satisfying shareholders. So Walt couldn't just knock on Adriana's door and hand her more cash, no matter how famous the movie became. She signed a contract for a certain amount of money. She fulfilled her contract, as did Walt Disney Productions. According to this article, Adriana said that if she wanted more money, she would have to choose a friendly way of doing so, and she was sure that the company would give it to her. She never spoke poorly of Walt and never accused him or the company of ruining her career. The lesson to learn here is that sometimes situations and people are more complex than simple emotions. Adriana lived the rest of her life in a home decorated just the way she liked. In 1983, she was hired to provide the voice for Snow White's Wishing Well at Disneyland, and then in 1994, the Walt Disney Company named her a Disney legend. So then, you might be wondering, if Walt Disney wasn't the villain of this story, then why do so many people keep framing him as one? Well, if the title of this video has anything to say about it, it's that people love to hear juicy gossip, especially if it features the defamation of a person once renowned for being a force for good. I guess it just goes to show that things aren't always as simple as they appear. Sponsorship for this program is provided by Jason from Interactive Realm. My friend Jason creates custom crafts and signs. If you go to the Interactive Realm YouTube channel, you can see what he does. Also, by going to the Interactive Realm website, you can order your own custom craft. If you go to the Interactive Realm Etsy page, you can find things he's already created and exclusive Alex the Historian merchandise. Interactive Realm. Imagine the possibilities.